So Mary, I'd like to show you how I tap a tree. And what I use, first of all, is a tap. Well, this is one kind of a tap. There's many different kinds of taps. This is just a plain metal tap. Uh, some are made from plastic and some are, are bent around different shapes, but this is a basic tap. Uh, there's even some folks that just use a short piece of pipe about that size, too. Uh, nothing special about these at all. So, And then you need a drill to make the hole. Pretty basic, uh, plain old drill. And then when you're done tapping and you finally pull your taps out, maybe the season is over, some people will plug that hole and some people don't. If you do plug it, most folks will make just a plain old wooden plug. Um, you, can, you can get square pieces of wood like this at a lumber yard, cut them off and sharpen them a little bit, and you just tap that into the hole. It's kind of a seal. And then the other thing about that plug is that next year when you come to tap that tree, you'll see right away where you were the year before. The plug is easy to recognize. So, And, and to tap the tree then, uh, take your drill, and then we're going to want to go in about that far. Probably the first joint in my thumb, I mean, but you want to get it deep enough so your tap goes in as far as it can. So other than that, you're not going to gain anything by going halfway into the tree. So this is a 3 8 inch bit, and you use different size bits depending on what kind of tap you have. Some taps are smaller diameter, so you'd use a smaller bit. So to tap, uh, usually um, find your spot on the tree, tilt your drill about that kind of an angle. You know, again, it's not critical, but it's just so your tap, when you stick it in the hole, it points down so it'll run out. And you just... about that far. And so then you have your hole. Then you take your tap and your hammer. You stick that in there, and you're all done. That's it. That's tapping a tree. How long does it take the sap to start flowing after you put the tap in? If you're right on the verge of the trees starting to produce sap, it'll probably run almost immediately. Now, some of them will just drip, drip really slow. Some of them will be a little stream coming out. Depends on the tree. So the next, the next thing to do here now would be, depend on what you're going to collect your sap in, but you could put a hose on the end of this and then into like a five gallon pail. Or there's holes here, you can, you can hook a wire on there and hook a little pail, or you can hang a plastic bag on that. There's all kinds of ways to collect sap, so it's whatever you have and what you want to use. But that's, that's your tap. And how long does it take to fill the pail? Well, if it's a five gallon pail and if it's a, if it's a good tree, uh, you probably want to be there every third day pretty easily or it'll start to run over. So when you are done, you pull this back out. How do you get it back out? Is it hard? The other end of your hammer. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just hook that on that tap and, and you'll pop out. And then for those that like to plug their hole, you'd stick a plug in it, the same plug I just showed you. And you tap that in, and you're all done. That's it. Okay. And that, that tree then will heal around that plug, and it'll be just like nothing ever happened. So then, while you're collecting, you bring it back, and you put it into this big tank then? We do, yes. Yep. And how long can you hold that sap until you start cooking it? It has a lifespan. Depends on, depends on what your storage conditions are like. If you're able to keep it cool, you're probably good for five, six days a week maybe. Uh, if it's warm, it can get sour on you, and then you got to dump it. fellow that I work with that, that collects the sap, he keeps his tank in his shop, and it stays pretty cool. If we get a, a batch of bad weather, do you have to worry about the sap freezing at all? Uh, it will freeze. Um, I've experienced that before. We um, had sap in a, big, in a big tank and we hadn't gotten around to cooking it yet. And it froze that night, so there's this iceberg in the, 
floating around on top. If you take that ice out and throw it, all you're doing is throwing away plain water. So you're really concentrating that sap more yet. It's almost like boiling it. Um, yeah, it'll freeze and you can get ice in it, but it's only pure water that freezes. So the sugar stays in the, stays in the bottom. So then you, you have a couple of these big containers like this for your sap? He, uh, the guy that I work with has a tank just like this one. And when that gets full, he'll put it in the back of his pickup and he'll come over here and we'll empty it into this tank. How much sap do you collect before you start cooking it down? I like to have a full tank. Um, this is a 300 gallon tank. The reason I like a full tank is because when I fill the boiler to, to start out with, it's all just plain sap. And it takes a whole day of cooking before you can finally get some concentrated sap that you can draw off and then go finish in a different, different cooker. It takes 30 gallons just to fill the boiler. So you like to start out with enough. And then you're gonna continually add to it throughout the day as it evaporates, as the moisture evaporates away. So you have to have a good supply to get started. Ken, what happens if you start and then you get a heavy rain or a snow or whatever? Can you hold it and then restart it? Yeah, I go in the house and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I don't, I don't cook 24 hours a day. Some people do, I don't. But when it comes later in the evening, I'll just quit feeding wood into the boiler and just let it burn out and then it'll cool and I'll come out after it gets dark and I'll put covers on it and it'll sit that way overnight. Next day I soak it full of wood, light it up and away we go again. <laughs>